The first thing to check is actually your bulbs and see if those things are bad. Facing towards the front of the car, your low beams is this little connector right here. So to change the bulb, all you gotta do is reach down and twist, and then you should be able to pull it out. And then all you have to do is unhook this. So press down, press down on this, and then pull out the light bulb. So I already exchanged the light bulbs, and these are actually new ones, and I tested them, and they still don't work. And this also goes for the other side. Uh, the light bulb doesn't work on that side either. So this is like the basic circuit that I was trying to explain. So this is your battery. It sends power to the relay. And then when the relay is turned on, so when you turn that console, uh, the control switch in, your, uh, in, the, in the car, it should turn on the switch. And then it'll activate these and then turn on uh, the, the low beams or the high beams, depending on what setting you're on. If only one light bulb is working, so if I only had one low beam working and uh, this one wasn't working, that would mean that this fuse is probably bad. Now it's possible, since both aren't working, is that both these fuses are bad. So therefore, I'm gonna go check if these two fuses are bad. So for the Camry, uh, the fuse box is located right next to the battery. Um, so it's just right here, you take off this hood. And within the hood, it shows you what uh, are the fuses um, used for. If you look right here, you have two 10 amp uh, fuses for the uh, headlights for the high beams. So this is the left hand side and the right hand side. So those are working fine because we tested those already. Now, if you wanna look for the low beam fuses, they're over here. These are the low beam uh, fuses. They're the 15 amp ones. So to locate those fuses correctly, so if you were to open this and flip it over to this side, uh, these will co correspond to the position in the fuse box. So the low beam uh, fuses are these right here. So what I'm going to do is check the continuity of these fuses by using a voltmeter or a multimeter. So I have my voltmeter and uh, it's in the diode setting or in the continuity setting. You can use it for both. And what I'm going to do is connect these probes to this amp, or not this amp, this fuse. So I'm going to connect it like that. So I have those connected. And if you have a reading close to zero, that means it's a short circuit, meaning the fuse is not blown. Um, if this reading was a one, therefore that would mean the fuse was blown and you would have to exchange this fuse. Basically you repeat the process for the other 15 amp fuse and then see if that's your issue. And this will be more likely the issue if you have only one bulb out and all your bulbs are new. So what I know so far is that the fuses are fine. The only thing that can prevent this from working is the relay. For the or as far as we know. So if you look at the fuse box, uh, it says head. That's the headlight relay for the, uh, the low beams and high beams. So it's actually this uh, relay right here. I already know that the relay works. Uh, one way to check it, it's probably not the ro uh, robust way, but uh, one way to check it is to flick or turn on your high beams or low beams and hear for a clicking noise. So hopefully I'm going to get this on camera. Um, I'm going to go turn on and off the high beams and low beams and hear for a clicking noise. You should be able to hear it, hopefully. So hopefully you heard that. Uh, you could hear the relay switching. But to make this very, very clear, what we're going to do is check this relay and it's very simple so what i'm going to do is remove this uh relay you can actually do this by hand if you're strong enough i'm not so all i'm going to do is uh grip on to these and um uh so i should be able to just yank it out hopefully without breaking anything and there we go so this is what a relay looks like so now we're going to go test it so these two bigger uh terminals is basically to power on the device so what we're gonna do is connect a power supply to these terminals. If you don't have a power supply, you can connect it to your car battery, that should be fine. Uh, so you connect ground or power to uh, one of these uh, terminals to turn on the device. Okay, so I'm gonna turn on my power supply. So this is like a cheap eBay one. Hopefully the voltage is not up, okay. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is basically crank the voltage. Okay, so I'm gonna check the continuity. So just like the fuse, and we get basically zero, which means there's a short circuit across these two terminals. 
which is what the relay is supposed to do. Now, if you see a number higher than zero or a relatively large number, that means this is an open circuit. Your relay is bad. So I'm gonna go put this back into the where it belongs, the relay, and we'll get back to our troubleshooting. God damn it, this fucking washer machine. Okay, so what we're doing so far, the, this is our basic uh, troubleshooting process. So this is power to the uh, relay, and the relay controls uh, whether or not the high beams or low beams are on. But before power reaches the low beams, we have a fuse. So the first thing we did was uh, check the light bulbs. So those were fine. The next thing we did was check uh, the fuses and both were fine. And then what we did was check the relay. Therefore, all those components are working. If we have a power coming in and we have all these other components working, the last thing to check is our ground. So we have to make sure that the device is properly grounded or the light bulbs are pro properly grounded so going back over here um you're just gonna have to trust me on this one uh you have two wires going to that light bulb one is a black and white wire and one is a red and green wire we're gonna check if whether or not this is grounded luckily enough if you follow this wire you can see that it goes through this harness and then it comes back out comes over here and is grounded to the chassis. Now, visually inspecting this, there's nothing really wrong with this. You could probably further confirm this by checking the ground of this to the battery. So just connect your voltmeter uh, ground terminal to here, and then connect the power or the red terminal of your voltmeter to the power of the battery. You should see roughly 12 volts if your battery's in good condition. If you uh, see that, there is nothing wrong with it being grounded. So let's go back to the circuit diagram and see what else can be wrong. Okay, so we have all these components checked, the light bulbs and everything. The last thing that can only, the only thing that can control the light bulb is actually this component right here, the light console, uh, control switch, which is basically inside your car. So that means we're not getting power simply because the switch is not turning on properly. Now, if the switch is turning on properly um, and we have all these components checked already, there is something really wrong with the car because there's no other possible way to turn on your um, low beam. Unless it grounded somewhere, unless one of these wires were grounded somewhere, so like right here was grounded and you weren't able to uh, have a full circuit to the battery. But I don't think anything has grounded over here since all the wires are nicely wrapped and uh, covered with that uh, plastic material. The problem here is more than likely the control switch in my car. So let's go check that out. Okay, so the control switch is this thing right here. So we basically have to look at the connection where this connects to the wires in the car and then sends it out to the relay. So uh, what we're gonna do is actually take this component apart, basically this under, under this part, this bottom half and see what's going on there. So the first thing you wanna do is, uh, is actually remove two Phillips head screws. So what you want to do is basically put your uh, keys in the ignition. If I could do that, turn it on. You just have to turn the ignition on. You don't have to turn on the car. And then rotate the wheel. Or actually, uh, yeah, rotate the wheel until you see one of the screws like that. And then remove that screw. Okay, that's one screw removed. There's another one on the other side. So you just have to rotate the wheel again. And you should be able to see the other screw. So just remove that screw as well. And then simply you should be able to pull this bottom half part off. You might have to get a screwdriver or like a flathead to pry it open, but you should be able to get that part off. So just pull it down basically, and you should be able to pull it off. I was able to come from this side and just pull it out. It should like come in like this. So come out like that. And then you should have the connection from, for the control switch to the rest of the circuit, which is all these wires. Our next goal is to uh, troubleshoot these wires and see what's, which one's really wrong. What I'm trying to do is actually see if I could turn on the headlights by shorting out these pins. If I'm able to short out these pins and turn on the headlight, then I know the component that is wrong or faulty is actually the switch. So maybe the switch inside has been worn out and that is the issue. So what I'm gonna do is try to short out one of these pins, try to figure out which one's which and uh, turn on the headlight. 
Okay, so essentially to find which one's power and which one's ground and which one controls the headlights or the switches, I just basically uh, probed the voltmeter across each one. So I put ground on the first one and then the red lead across all these to see which one gives us power. None of these gave us power. I moved the ground lead one over and then test the other leads with the other, uh, with the red uh, pin. Hopefully that's not too confusing. So basically what I found out, if I remember correctly, uh, the second pin on the top row is power. And then these switches right here, these are the switches to the control uh, switch. So if I, if I were to rotate this, that would create a short circuit within these pins and that would turn on the high beams. So I believe it was one of these three and the second pin over here that provides power to the switches. And if I short these, it'll turn on the low beams. So let me try that real quick. Oh, and all you're gonna need is like some sort of wire, a uh, small enough wire to, uh, to uh, short them out. Okay, so what I found out, it's that button or those two pins, if they're connected or shorted, those will turn on the high beam. So this is just one black wire. It's just a really long wire. And you basically short those two pins and what happens is it turns on your low beams. So let me show you that. So this is the same headlight I showed you at the beginning of the video. Uh, you could, again, these are your high beams and these are your low beams. So the pins are shorted right now and the low beams are on. Okay, so that means we found out our issue. It's not the actual wires or the circuit that goes all the way to the headlights to the front of the car. It's actually this little device that controls the switching on and off. So the next goal is to try to actually uh, replace it. Okay, it's been a day later and uh... I researched how much this part would cost, and it's roughly $160, which I think is a little expensive for a few switches, uh, when I could just basically short the pins in this uh, connector and have the same result. So what I'm gonna do is actually take this part out, which I should have done earlier, and see if I could actually fix the issue. Uh, more than likely, it's just a bad connection, and maybe I could fix that by maybe cleaning it, or maybe have to solder some new uh, metal piece to it, if I can do that. So what I'm gonna do is take off this top piece, which I didn't show in the previous video. So I guess you had to pull out this top piece as well. So if you pull out this top piece, the top piece should come off as well. And there's the, the clip that I was talking about before, it was right here. So you had to reach your hand underneath, push this in, and then you should be able to pull out this top piece. And then to pull out this whole assembly, this whole control switch, there's this pin right here. You probably get like a flathead or so and just uh, push, push in right here and then you should be able to pull this whole thing out. And as you can see, it's already a lot, really dirty, so that's probably the issue. Okay, so I brought this in the garage, so this is how it should look. I mean, it's disassembled right now, but I'm going to go through the process of taking it apart. So there's this uh, plastic clear uh, covering. And all you have to do is basically unclip it. As you can see, there's clips on the sides. So you just be very careful and just unclip it. Maybe you could use like a small flathead or something to unclip it. And then right here, there should be two screws. You unscrew those. Uh, they look like this. There should be two of them. And then this is probably the most tricky and frustrating part is to take off this piece. So if you look around, uh, there's actually, around the de device, there are actually little uh, holes for clips. So you just gotta be very gentle and go around the device and unclip every clip. It took me about like 10 minutes to get it out because I didn't want to break this because it's made out of plastic. So you gotta be very careful. And uh, there, I believe there's four, so two on this side, or maybe six. All right, I think there's two on this side, two on this side, and two on this side. Uh, I believe that's how it is. And then you should be able to take it um, out like that. And there you go, there's the inside. Um, the issue I believe is in here. So, cause that's where all the copper connections are. So I'm gonna remove this bolt and see what's going on in here. Okay, so that very small bolt is really small. It's, uh, it looks like this, hopefully you can see that. And it requires this uh, small Phillips screwdriver. It's uh, zero, zero, that's the most important part. That's the head size of the Phillips screw. And then 50 millimeters is just the length of the screwdriver, so that's not really important. But it has to be FH00 to unscrew this part. 
And this uh, plastic piece should come off quite easily. And now we have the insides. Okay, what I deciphered is that this thing right here, it slides back and forth, and this determines whether or not your uh, turn signals are on. So this is like your blinker is on on the left side, blinker on on the right side. And that determines that. So therefore, all the switches on this thing over here when you rotate this is all right here. And I don't see anything really wrong with it. I mean, it looks pretty fine. It looks almost like brand new. What I'm thinking is maybe I could take this part apart because there is a screw right there. So I'm going to take a look on this side. Okay, I realize you could unplug this uh, from this, which is this pin right here. I realize you could unplug that. And then after I took out that screw, it opened this uh, compartment. So these are the connections to the actual switch. Now I'm going to try to figure out how to get this thing out of it. It took me a little bit to figure out, but uh, there's this pin right here that is that goes directly underneath where it's supposed to be. Like it's it clips on. So essentially what you do, you get, uh, there's this little opening on the side and basically you just push that uh, clip out and now you have this. So then all you have to do, this should allow this to move out and there we go, we get this switch by itself. So going on with all these clips, there are two clips, uh, it just came apart, but there's two clips here, you basically push these in and then at the same time pull it out. Hopefully I remember the orientation of this, but. Okay, this is what not to do. There's these small clips, um, let me find one, right here. So there was a clip on this side. I thought you'd be able to pull this white piece downward on this side, but you can't because uh, of this constraint right here. It is this plastic black piece that is keeping this white piece in place. So I thought by unhooking these clips and pulling downward would do it. See, this is a perfectly fine clip, and uh, I didn't see that, so I broke off this piece. So what I'm thinking is that what we have to do is take off this red piece and then this top black piece will come off. But I have to be very careful because there's, there's these uh, small bearings or these uh, tiny metallic balls that keep uh, the thing uh, in the switch uh, mode, so to speak. So this is like the feeling when you switch on the control switch. So I'm gonna try to take off this red piece. Keep in mind there's these two small bearings right here. Okay, so I didn't really wanna break this cause I don't know how to take this piece off correctly. Uh, obviously there's pins right there um, on both sides, but uh, I think this is also constrained by this right here, but I don't know if that's actually a pin cause it looks like it's stuck onto the black piece. So I'm not sure to, uh, if I could take this apart. So essentially what I did so far, I believe the the red lead on, or actually the orange lead, which is the red wire on the circuit, is the power lead. And then all the other ones are set to ground or the switches basically. And what I found is that when I have uh, this switch, when it's set to uh, this position, all the switches turn on. So I don't know how that works necessarily. But all the switches turn on, except for this purple one. So I'm thinking that the yellow wire, or the purple wire, is the part that is damaged. Uh, technically a switch shouldn't work that way, but I'm not sure on what it necessarily does. Okay, this may be a little much. You could probably do this with a voltmeter, uh, which is what I did earlier, but I was trying to understand what, the, what is going on. So what I got is this very simple circuit that lights up LEDs, and essentially the state of the switch should turn on each LED individually. However, I noticed that when I'm on the first position, the green light turns on, the yellow light turns on a little bit, and the blue light doesn't turn on at all. However, when I switch states, I'm on the second position and it turns off. And if I do the remaining states, all those LEDs turn off as well. So it's possible that I don't have this configured correctly, but I think what's going on is that it's short circuiting within this component right here. Okay, so actually I was able to get this out. I was just being a little bitch. I couldn't fucking pull this thing out. I got this little uh, flat thing spatula. I, I think you could have done it with a flathead screwdriver as well. And you just gotta put some elbow grease. Don't put uh don't put pressure on the pins. Just use the the flathead screwdriver or this like spatula to bend the pins. 
but put the pressure on this lip so you don't damage the pin. So we put pressure here and be very careful on where you take this apart because two small little bearings or balls will come out and uh, yeah, you don't want to lose your balls. Now we could see what's actually inside. There is a spring right here, so keep in mind of that. You should be able to take this apart and we could see our cul culprit, which is all this gunk right here. So the idea is to clean these copper connections and this, and then I'm gonna go test it on that breadboard again and see if we get a new working device. This piece, it's really clean now, so hopefully that makes a better connection. I also bend these a little bit further out so it makes sure it makes contact with this piece. If you're going to do that, be very careful. Again, you don't want to break anything. And also clean the inside of this, which is a lot cleaner than before. So I'm going to go test this now. So I've been messing with this circuit by switching this uh, switch over here and controlling these LEDs. And what I noticed is that when I turn the switch uh, to the low beam position, no matter what configuration I put these wires, it does not turn on an LED. So therefore, there's an open circuit somewhere in this device. I believe it's between the contacts of the wires to this rotational device. So I'm going to take this apart again and see what's going on. Okay, so far I ruled out that this isn't the issue because I checked the continuity of these wires. So, so no matter what configuration uh, this uh, piece gives this, uh, uh, these four wires, um, the continuity should work. So therefore the connections are fine uh, of this wire, even the pins are fine. The only thing that's wrong is this piece, which I don't know what's wrong with it. So I'm going to further inspect this piece. Okay, so I came to a conclusion. Um, this actual switch, this right here, is actually working fine. The reason why I was skeptical was because of the circuit and it wasn't working properly. But I realized I just have a shitty breadboard, and that's why the different LEDs didn't turn on. So I was able to turn each LED on individually. Well, one had uh, two LEDs on, which simulates the low beams and high beams being on. And I think that's what happens when you turn on your high beams. Your low beams are also on. But um, you, have that two, you have that state, which turns on two LEDs. For the low beam, only one LED turns on, and then... One LED turns on when you have only the dash on, I believe. Then I got to thinking, maybe it's not, since we checked the wires, checked the continuity, we checked this switch, then I got to thinking maybe it's this connection right here. Uh, so I tried cleaning the inside of it to see if that changed anything. It really didn't. Um, and then I checked the continuity of these pins to the pins over here that was supposed to turn on the low beams. And it looks like they're not configured correctly. So what I'm thinking is that in between this uh, plastic piece, somehow it shorted somehow, and I'm not sure how. And I believe you can't just buy this piece alone, you have to buy the whole set. So I believe the issue is the connection from here to here. That is the issue. Which is unfortunate because I can't really fix that. So, uh, it's been another day, and I found this online. It's uh, from a service manual for my car. I realized you could just check the continuity of the pins of the different switches on the control switch and to see if there's continuity at the correct times. So my issue is the low beams, so it's number 16 and 17. So I just checked the continuity on 16 and 17. On this connection right here, by turning this on to the low beams and then checking the continuity of this, uh, the orientation of the pins are exactly the same as shown in the picture. So this top clip is this top clip right here. So then you just check the continuity based on those pins and see if there's an issue there. There is an issue when I turn on the low beams, the continuity does not work across these pins. Therefore, there is something wrong within the com combination switch. So I have taken this apart, like completely. I thought it was the switch up here, but that isn't the issue. Um, the actual problem is within the circuitry back here. Uh, you could try taking it apart and cleaning it like I did, but you will soon realize that the components that you need to fix, at least for me, is within the plastic portion of the device, which I can't easily get to without breaking it. So therefore, I can't really fix this without buying a new part. So this is the faulty issue.